I was getting ready to go to lunch and I turned on my cell phone and it rang and it was Dave, his dad. And Dave just said, we're at the hospital and Phil has leukemia. I was so mad. And the generation that I grew up, if you had leukemia, you died. And it didn't take long. Mom just went in for a routine checkup and the doctor came in and, um, and said that my white blood cell count was way higher than it should be. It probably meant that there was some kind of um, blood thing going on, possibly leukemia. Family doctor basically, you know, just hands you a piece of paper and says you have leukemia. How can, how can they just tell you that you have leukemia? It's just that easy to change someone's life. First chemo wasn't successful. I went in again for another round. Um, that wasn't successful. I mean, that's where Dr. Wagner comes in. It's been known for about 25 years that there are special cells in umbilical cord blood um, that, that are very promising in the use of transplant medicine. In 1990, I performed the very first cord blood transplant for a child with leukemia that had never been done before. Interestingly, the majority of people who looked at that report suggested that it would never be very useful because the numbers of stem cells in core blood would just be too limiting. Really for the past 20 years I've been focusing my research efforts on trying to figure out how to increase that number of stem cells. Our goal, which was to double, maybe triple the number of stem cells, was far exceeded by this chemical we call SR1. SR1 may revolutionize the practice not just of cord blood transplant but all of transplant medicine. SR1 has the capacity not to double or triple the number of stem cells but actually cause them to proliferate to almost 500 times. Several years ago the very first patient received these SR1 expanded stem cells and the results were far better than I ever expected. We were hoping to reduce the time of recovery from 26 days to 20 days and instead we've reduced it to five days. This result is more than successful, it's stunning. I had the option to be a part of the research program or whatever that they were doing and honestly after being in the hospital and having to stay there and being sick and stuff like a few days makes a huge difference to get out early. Uh, breakthroughs are, are just waiting out there um, and it, it takes time and it takes money there are people like Phil that say, I'll volunteer, try it on me. Um. He's back doing his studies now, not even three weeks later. I mean, how can you not want people to keep researching? And now what we hope to do is to make transplant even better by using these stem cells that are expanded having recoveries that occur much more rapidly than we'd ever hoped for with any type of transplant, reduce the cost of transplant procedure, reduce the number of hospital days, reduce the number of infections, reduce the number of transfusions, and actually in one day, we might actually be able to do this as an outpatient because such recoveries are unprecedentedly fast. And so that's what our goal is, and this is the first major step that actually in my way of thinking, is going to be a hinge in history for transplant medicine. That'll save quite a few lives. Without donations to support, uh, in this case, the Children's Cancer Research Fund, we wouldn't have those, and in our case, Ross wouldn't be here.